Now, let us look at a, the, the Signal's law in terms of timing diagrams. We said that clock comes, clock leads to generation of what we call as CKI and CK internal, okay? In a little while, after decoding happens, then we will generate what is called as word line and reference word line. And on the IO side, we will generate a write clock. Hmm? The same signal that I kept as the blue clock in the previous slide. When the write clock gets selected, what happens? Uh, bit lines, because the write driver would do something, one of the bit lines would discharge. The other bit line will remain at one. The reference bit line would also discharge. And after the word line slash reference word line are selected, are generated, what happens? We generate a signal which is called as write detect, which kind of uh, senses that the contents in one reference cell have been written. After write detect is received, we generate a reset signal. After the reset, so we had done that, you know, we had done until write operation getting completed in the previous slide. Now, I'll be talking, adding an additional step of reset. Once we know that the sense amplifier has operated, once we know that the write detect has come, once we know that the memory operation, the intended operation of this particular cycle has been operated, memory itself generates an, a reset internally. Okay. So uh, this is true for almost all the embedded SRAMs, even DRAMs, even flash. So this is called as self-timing. Means that memory times itself and tells now I can reset the memory. Like I can now be resetted. Hmm? So what? why is it important? Because now I am not dependent on external clock's duty cycle. The external clock frequency does not impact my memory operation. Let us see how why this is important. Now, after this reset comes, what happens? The clock internal is reset. Subsequently, word lines get reset. Bit line is pre-charged. And after the bit lines are also pre-charged, everything is done. The write detect goes down and reset goes down. Okay. Now your memory is already, you know, this was the initial state. The state and the initial state are the same. Are you able to see this? Now your memory is ready to accept the next clock edge. Now, why is this sequencing important to be kept separate from uh, external clock? Any ideas? Ranjit, you have a question. Yes, sir, uh, firstly, I didn't understand what is this internal clock. Okay, we will come to that. Anything else? And then what is the difference between the reference word line and the word line? And what is the difference between the uh, bit line and the reference right bit line? Okay. Anything else? Uh, that's it, sir. Okay. So any other questions? So everything else is clear, huh? <laughs> okay. So uh, Ranjit, the question that you posed actually has the answer to my question in itself. Uh, we do not use external clock for generating all the internal signals. There are two reasons behind it. One is that internally, the clock would need inside the memory, the clock needs to go to numerous places. We said that the clock would go to the, all the row decoders. We said the clock will go to all the IOs. You see, we talked about that, that there is a write clock that has to go to the IOs to activate the write driver. We said there is a clock that goes to the row decoders to activate the row decoders, word line generation and so on. Hmm? Yes. So if we use the external clock to do all that, then the total load on the external clock will be humongous. Okay. It is absolutely unacceptable. For any IP, for any IP, whether it is a memory or a PLL or, or a standard cell. So we talked about standard cells in the previous course, but I'm saying even PLLs, ADC, DAX that you may do in, uh, in mixed signal courses, even, even for those, the input capacitance of any pin has a limit. 
you cannot keep that input capacitance beyond a particular threshold. For some technology, it could be 10 femtofarads. For another, it could be 25 femtofarads. For some, it could be 30 femtofarads or 50 femtofarads. But you will see there is always a limit. Okay. And uh, if you travel clock throughout the memory the way we need it to be traveled, uh, that capacitance would go so high that this would not work. So you somehow need to buffer it and somehow you need to generate some internal clock. Okay, so does this part help that there has to be some buffering, something which is internal to the memory and not the external clock? Yes, sir. Hmm? Yeah. Now, when we are generating this internal clock, we want to do something else. We want to say that, see, now memory, for that matter, you will realize as we proceed, that the memory read operation and write operation can be very slow. Which means that you want to keep the word line on for a significant amount of time. Hmm? And the remaining reset operation can actually happen very, very fast. So the low period of the clock need not be very high. So you want a very long high period of the clock, but very small low period of the clock. That is what the memory requirement is. However, when you talk of a PLL, what is the typical duty cycle you would want it to operate at? A typical clock generator, any clock signal that you would have seen, any oscillator, what does it do? It says almost 50% high time, almost 50% low time. Is it not the case? Yes, sir. But yes, sir. Yes, yeah, so now let us take the example that my memory needed 2 nanoseconds of high period and 0 0.5 nanoseconds of low period. So in fact, totally my memory could operate in 2.5 nanoseconds, let us say. Hmm? That is the fastest speed at which memory could operate. Can we say this? Now this is a hypothetical case and this is too much simplification also. Okay, but let us say that in total 2.5 nanoseconds our memory could have operated of which 0.5 could have been low period and 2 could have been the preferred high period. That is how my word line wanted it to be. Let us say that. Hmm. However, if the clock generator's duty cycle is 50%, what will be the frequency, uh, what will be the time that uh, the clock generator will take? 2 nanosecond for the high time because that is what is required. And because this is two nanoseconds, the load time will also be two nanoseconds. So the clock will clock frequency will now be four nanoseconds. Are you able to see this? Yes, sir. So what has happened? Even though I could operate at 400 megahertz, because my I did not have an internal clock, I said my outer external clock will be used internally to the memory after buffering. So maximum speed at which my system can now operate is only 250 megahertz. Even though memory could operate at 400 megahertz. And this 250 megahertz is constrained because of the memory only now. Are you able to see this? Yes. Hmm. So what do we want to say? We, we, we tell the user, okay, see, we know the memory can operate at 2.5 nanoseconds and we need a duty cycle of 80%. But you don't worry. We will generate this internal duty cycle internally only. You don't worry about it. You operate at 400 megahertz. You keep an external duty cycle, which is at 50% only. So the external clock, would be like this, okay? But internally my CKI would, would have a much longer high period. Does this make sense? Yes, sir. So that is also the reason why we need to generate the reset internally. Because if we were to use the external clock as the reset, then this constraint would set in. 
sir this 2 nanosecond which you said uh, will it take 2 nanosecond every time or because it it depends on the reset right so the high time may change like uh, why, it, why do you say more that it depends on the reset uh, because reset is uh, uh, lowering that uh, cki right yeah like, but reset will come only after okay so when we will answer anjit's other questions we will see that so reset or sen will come only after my write detect has come is it not yes sir where does write what does write detect depend on write detect cki yeah CKI. it depends upon uh, the writing uh, amount on of the time. writing speed of my memory cell yes. you see so all this is actually driven by the speed of the memory cell Actually, why I, I, why I ask is uh, some base cell will be nearer to that uh, decoded and some are, uh, some are far, right? So the time taken to um, this move these signals bit to bit may be different, I assume. So the... Uh, yes. You're right. But you are assuming that all bit cells are symmetrical, exactly same. What if the cell which is closest to the, uh, the I.O is also slow. It could take more time than the cell which was farther away. So the, the in the array, all bit cells are not identical. Ah, we talked about it in DVD also. Now you write your name 10 times more. Will okay. it be identical 10 times? Yes, sir. Some difference will be there. Ah, so the same thing would happen with thousands and millions of copies of the memory cells also now. So you cannot deterministically say that the cell which is closer to the IO is also faster. So what do you need to do? When should the write detect signal come? When should the write detect signal come, everyone? So when the write operation has been successfully done, when you have written into the uh, bit cell, into any bit cell or all the bit cells? So I mean, uh, the one we are targeting, the address. Maybe. The one address may have 32 bit cells. A one word could be 32 bit wide now. Yes, sir. It has to be all the bit cells. It has to be all the bit cells. Hmm? So what does this mean? That write detect should come after the worst case cell has also been written into. Are you able to see this? So, but we would be writing at a only not only at the whole word, right? We would be writing only at a particular. Yeah. Place. So, do you know which word has the worst case cell? I ask you to write your name hundred times, Raghav. Yes, sir. Can you tell me that tenth one will be the will be the worst one? No, sir. The first no, one could be the worst one. Hundredth one could be the worst one. Got it. Sir. Okay. How much space do you need to leave for writing your name? The so worst. The worst. The worst bit cell, sir. Otherwise, nahi aayega na? Yes, sir. So is this clear? And this also takes us to the question that Ranjit asked. Why? What is this reference word line and what is this reference bit line? See, the actual word into which I would be reading or writing may not be the worst word or some bit of that word could be the worst bit. We do not know. So as memory designers, what we do is we add a reference word line and a reference bit line. Reference word line is very similar to the real word line. We will talk more about it later. And reference bit line is also very similar to the real bit line in terms of total capacitance. There is some modification we do, but that is what we will talk about later. And what we do is we ensure that the cells on the reference bit line and the reference word line ensure that they are the slowest ones through design somehow. We will talk about it. Okay. And that is what we use to generate the write detect. So they are kind of references. They ensure that worst case cell is also written into or worst case cell is also correctly read. That is why they are called reference word line and reference, reference word line and reference bit line. Does this answer your question, Ranjit? Uh, yes, sir. sir. But here, uh, if we look at bit lines, so the reference bit line is much faster as compared to the bit line. So yeah. this doesn't ensure uh, the required uh, function, you know, sir. 
yeah look at it like this after the write detect signal comes how long how long does it take for the word line to get deselected uh, okay it takes enough amount of time so that the clock so we have to keep that margin also into picture we don't want to waste time okay yeah moreover this is just a cartoon okay, okay. <laughs> it it is fairly representative but it is still a cartoon the exact exact uh, uh, you know correlation so this is just a sequencing that i wanted to share with you Hmm? Yes, yes, but the exact delay between two different signals that would be different. Hmm? This is not even representative of that. This is just a sequencing diagram. Yes, sir. Okay. Yeah, Raghav, so you have a question. Uh, yes, sir. So, what is the word clock? I mean, signal does here. Yeah. This is right clock. Yes, sir. So, I mean, CK. My, I mean, the right operation will be controlled by this right clock. The right driver is controlled by the right clock. Okay, sir. Don't worry. Again, these are just nomenclatures. I've just used some name. Hmm? So, any any questions further? Any further questions? Because then I would want you take to take you to the data sheet as to how a memory data sheet looks like. Uh, I was not able to clearly understand the uh, that significance of the reset signal. I was able to get that we are resetting the mem memory to this original position, but exactly what crucial load it was playing, I was not able to get that. Okay, you re you could understand that we wanted a duty cycle which is independent of the external clock. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So how do you bring the clock to low? Internal clock to low. How do you create that duty cycle? You need some signals, no? Okay. Uh, so, sir, like uh, initially I was getting the 50 50 percent, but uh, based on my like reference word line, I generate that high period. I get the idea of that high period, how, how high the how high the period should be. And based upon that, I select this reset signal, which will basically uh, determine my that low period. Yeah. Okay. Okay, sir. Okay. Got it, sir. So for every memory, uh, the reset could come at a different time. Yes, sir. And so one more thing, sir, are these, these word reference word line, reference bit line, they are part of, they are like actual bit lines uh, in this memory array, in this memory structure. Yeah, what okay. else? So I was, because I was thinking that every bit line has that. So it would be, I was not able to structure that how exactly they would be part we'll of the whole design. So we'll see how, where, how and where they are placed later. Don't worry. Okay, sir. Okay, sir. The seventh eight lecture came about karata. That is when we will see this. Okay. Yeah. Anything else? So the right detect is telling us the right operation has completed. In the worst cell also. Or if you now re generate the reset, then by the time Verland gets deselected, right operation would be successfully completed everywhere. Okay, sir. Hmm? Okay. So now that takes me to uh, what we call as memory data sheet. What is a data sheet? What do you understand by the term data sheet? Have you seen a data sheet earlier? Sir? Mm -hmm. Sir, uh, why can't we use write detect as a reset signal, sir, exactly? I mean, it What will you same. do during the read cycle? Uh, yeah. Okay, okay, I understand. 